time. Sure, thanks, gentlemen. Recognize the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Jordan, for five Thank minutes. Thank you. Uh, Director, was Agent Peter Strzok the former deputy head of counterintelligence at the FBI? I don't remember his exact title, but I believe that's correct. And he's the same Peter Strzok who was a key player in the Clinton investigation, the same Peter Strzok who interviewed Cheryl Mills, Huma Abedin, participated in the Clinton, uh, Secretary Clinton's interview. And he's also the same Peter Strzok who now we know changed Director Comey's exoneration letter, changed the term gross negligence, which is a crime, to extreme carelessness. Is that the same guy? Well, Congressman, I don't know every step that uh, the individual you mentioned was involved in, but certainly I know that he was heavily involved in the uh, Clinton and he, email investigation. Thank you. And, he, and is, it's, is this the same Peter Strzok who helped, uh, was a key player in the Russian investigation, and the same Peter Strzok who was put on Mueller's team, uh, Special Counsel Bob Mueller's team? I certainly know that he was working on the special counsel's investigation. Whether or not he would be characterized as in a key same, player on that investigation, that's okay, really not the, for me to say. And the same Peter Strzok that we learned this past weekend was removed from the special counsel team because he exchanged text messages with a colleague at the FBI that were displayed a pro-Clinton bias. Is that accurate? Yes. Talk about the same guy. Okay. Yes. Well, here's what I'm not getting. Peter Strzok is selected to be on Mueller's team after all this history, put on Mueller's team, and then he's removed for some pro-Clinton text messages. I mean, there are all kinds of people on Mueller's team who are pro-Clinton. There's been all kinds of stories. PolitiFact reported 96% of the top lawyers' uh, uh, contributions went to Clinton or Obama. But Peter Strzok, the guy who ran the Clinton investigation, interviewed Mills, Abedin, interviewed Secretary Clinton, changed gross negligence a crime to the term extreme carelessness, who ran the Russian investigation, who interviewed Mike Flynn, gets put on Mueller's team, and then he gets kicked off for a text message that's anti-Trump. If he kicked everybody off Mueller's team who was anti-Trump, I don't think there'd be anybody left. So here, here, there's gotta be something more here. It can't just be some text messages that show a pro-Clinton anti-Trump bias. There's gotta be something more. And I'm trying to figure out what it is. But my hunch is it has something to do with the dossier. Director, did Peter Strzok help produce and present the application to the FISA court to secure a warrant to spy on Americans associated with the Trump campaign? Uh, Congressman, I'm not prepared to discuss anything about uh, a FISA process in this it's setting. Not a, we're not talking about what happened in the court. We're talking about what the FBI took to the court, the application. Did Peter Strzok, was he involved in taking that to the court? I'm not going to discuss in this setting anything to do with the FISA court applications. Well, let's, let's remember a couple things, Director. And I know you know this. We've, we've all been made aware of this in the last few weeks. Let's remember a couple things about the dossier. The Democrat National Committee and the Clinton campaign, which we now know were one and the same, paid the law firm who paid Fusion GPS, who paid Christopher Steele, who then paid Russians to put together a report that we call a dossier full of all kinds of fake news, National Enquirer garbage. And it's been reported that this dossier was all dressed up by the FBI, taken to the FISA court, and presented as a legitimate intelligence document that it became the basis for granting a warrant to spy on Americans. And I'm wondering, I'm, I'm wondering if that actually took place. It sure looks like it did. And the easiest way to clear it up is for you guys to tell us what was in that application and who took it there. Congressman, our staffs have been having extensive interaction with both intelligence committees on our interaction with the FISA court, and I think that's the appropriate setting for those questions. Here's what I think, Director Ray. I think Peter Strzok, head of counterintelligence at the FBI, Peter Strzok, the guy who ran the Clinton investigation, did all the interviews, Peter Strzok, the guy who was running the Russian investigation at the FBI, Peter Strzok, Mr. Super Agent at the FBI, I think he's the guy who took the application to the FISA court. And if that happened, I mean, think if this happened, if you had the FBI working with a campaign, the Democrats' campaign, taking opposition research dressing it all up and turning it into an intelligence document and taking it to the FISA court so they could spy on the other campaign? If that happened, 
That is as wrong as it gets. And you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. You can clear it all up. You can clear it all up for all of us here, all the Congress who wants to know, and frankly, all of America who wants to know. You can clear it all up by release. We sent you a letter two days ago. Just release the application. Tell us what was in it. Tell us if I'm wrong. But I don't think I am. I think that's exactly what happened. And if it did, it is as wrong as it can be. And people who did that need to be held accountable. Congressman, we will not hesitate to hold people accountable after there has been an appropriate investigation, independent and objective, by the Inspector General into the handling of the prior matter. And based on that, I will look at all available remedies, depending on what the facts are when they are found. As to the access to the dossier, that's something that is a subject of ongoing discussion between my staff and the various intelligence committees. There's nothing prohibiting you, Director. Is there anything prohibiting you from showing this committee the, what was presented to the FISA court? The, the application you all put together at the FBI that was presented to the FISA court, is there anything preventing you from showing us that? The time the gentleman has expired, the director can respond. I do not believe that I can legally and appropriately share a FISA court submission with this committee. I'm talking about what the FBI put together, not what the court had, what, what you took there, what was the, the process put together, what you presented, what you took to the court. When, when I sign FISA applications, which I have to do almost every day of the week, they are all covered with a classified information cover. So that's part of Director, why we is would it not likely be that Peter Strzok, Is it likely that Peter Strzok played a gentlemen, part in the application presented to the FISA court? The gentleman's time has expired. However, I do want to follow up on your last response to the gentleman. This committee, the House Judiciary Committee, has primary jurisdiction over the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. Uh, so any request for documents Mr. coming uh, to any part of the Congress should include the House Judiciary Committee. And if it uh, uh, is classified in any way, shape, or form, it can be provided to us uh, in a classified setting. But uh, that is information that we are very much interested in Mr. Chairman, and very much want to receive. Just a question to the Chairman. Yeah, I don't think there's anything prohibiting the FBI from giving us what they used to put together what was taken to the FISA court. That's what we're asking for, and there is nothing prohibiting him from doing that. I don't think there is either. The time of the gentleman has expired, however. Do you care to respond to that, Director Gray? No, I think I've covered it. The uh, chair recognizes the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Johnson, for five minutes. Thank you. Uh, Director Ray, uh, you've led a distinguished career as an assistant U.S. attorney for the Northern District of Georgia, Atlanta. We're homeboys on that part. Uh, Justice Department Associate Deputy Attorney General, even serving as an assistant attorney general heading up the criminal division of the entire Justice Department, and then uh, as a uh, litigation partner at the international and premier law firm of King and Spalding. Uh, you headed up the Special Matters and Government Investigations Practice Group, which involved uh, sophisticated government uh, investigatory matters and involving your clients. And uh, also, you even represented uh, Governor Christie during the Bridgegate scandal, uh, successfully, I presume, uh, at this point. Um, so you've had a long career in criminal law and in matters involving government, and I find it hard to believe that you have not pondered the question of whether or not a president can be guilty of obstruction of justice. You have pondered that question, have you not? Uh, to be honest, it's really not something I've pondered. Uh, that is a question that involves complicated questions of separation of powers, um, and I have, well, do you, this committee won't be shocked to learn quite a lot on my plate as it is. So I don't have a whole lot of time to do a lot of pondering. Well, let, me just under, let me just ask you the question. Do, do, is it your belief that a sitting president can be guilty of obstructing justice? That's a legal question that I haven't tried to evaluate. All right. Thank you, sir. Within the last few days, the House Intelligence Committee has requested documents from you and other government officials from the so-called Steele dossier. To date, you and other government officials have refused to comply with the production of these documents. Why have you failed to produce these documents? Uh, I, we are having extensive interaction with multiple committees about these issues. They involve complicated questions, not just of classification, 
They also affect ongoing investigations, in particular the special counsel's investigation. Uh, and in particular, uh, in many instances, we are dealing with very, very dicey questions of sources and methods, which is the lifeblood of foreign intelligence and for our liaison relationships with our foreign partners. Thank you. Uh, uh, Director Ray, earlier this year, the FBI opened an investigation into the vulnerabilities of the state of Georgia's election systems. Thereafter, Georgia citizens filed a lawsuit over the security or lack thereof of Georgia's election systems, which were then outsourced by Georgia's Secretary of State to the Center for Election Systems. Four days after that lawsuit was filed, Georgia election officials wiped clean or deleted the election data on CES servers. One month later, two additional servers were wiped clean. So evidence that is critical to the issues raised in the lawsuit um, and to the FBI investigation, uh, perhaps, uh, that information has been destroyed. Uh, can you confirm that the FBI obtained copies of the data on Georgia's election servers prior to the data being destroyed by Georgia election officials? Uh, Congressman, I, I can't discuss what the FBI may or may not have obtained in the course of any particular uh, investigation in this setting. Can you confirm that there is an ongoing investigation? into this matter? Uh, again, I, I don't want to confirm or deny, uh, it's important that I put both those words in there, uh, the existence of a specific investigation. Would you be willing, upon your investigation's completion, if there is an investigation, would you be willing to provide this committee with an update on this issue? Uh, if there is information that we could appropriately share uh, on the topic that you're answering about, I'd be happy to see if there's something we can do to be helpful and responsive to the committee. Thank you, sir. Uh, the Department of Justice recently admitted in court that they are treating the president's disturbing and combative tweets as, quote, official statements of the president of the United States, end quote. Considering the DOJ's position and the president repeatedly demanding that the FBI investigate his political opponents. Do you consider these tweets to be orders that the FBI must follow? Uh, that's a legal question, and I'll be guided by the lawyers on, on that one. So have your lawyers given you an opinion as to whether or not the president's tweets are official statements? Uh, I well, without discussing, you know, attorney-client communications, uh, I'm still following the ordinary course of business in terms of what orders we follow. Well, sir, you've, you've given me every objection for not answering the questions that is in the books, <laughs> and I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I, will, I yield back. The time of the gentleman has expired. The chair.